Now, <clears throat> welcome back. So, um, we have actually started um, our IcoFoam uh, calculations, and after a few minutes, we recognize that I you know we have this uh, starting time loop. So, yeah, this thing takes a bit longer than usual because of the huge mesh size. That's perhaps why it is so uh, long to start the loop. So you might, if you do this yourself, you might you might find that it takes a very long time to start. But no matter. And when the time actually starts, we re recognize the coron number is still very very much below one, the maximum. But there's a fatal error. It says the continuity error cannot be removed by adjusting the outflow. Now, uh, if you watch the basic open form uh, thing uh, tutorial series, you have run, you would have run into this problem before. So we can actually check the velocity boundary conditions or run open potential form to initialize the outflow. So again, what is this thing? Um, yeah, you can go back to some of those videos uh, where we go and talk about the laminar boundary layer, uh, where the 2D laminar boundary layer to check the solution. You can check out some of those videos. If not, uh, this very simple explanation is that um, we have some, uh, some uh, cells with velocity going in but there's no velocity going up because we made the field uniform at 0 meters a second uh, so that um, open firm is wondering what's happening, what's going on I can't adjust this 0 I cannot adjust this 0 because uh, the whole the whole field this way is 0 right? So if there's a mesh here okay, if there's a mesh here everything to the right hand side if this is the inlet Okay. Where is it? Yeah. So if this is the inlet, everything to the right hand side is zero. So open form gets confused as to what's going on. So uh, we can't have that happen. So one of the ways is to initialize potential form, which I may uh, no cover in future videos. Uh, but for now. There's a very simple workaround. So I'm going to go to pipe flow. Or rather thin pipe flow, snappy hex mesh. And let me check the status of the git. Okay. I can I can perhaps do that uh, later. I can do some git updating. But for now I want to go to snappy pipe. And I go to zero and let's take a look at the U file. Alright, so internal field goes to as 0, 0, 0. So instead of that, we'll just shift it to be the same as this uh, bottom patch boundary condition. Alright, 0, 0 and 0 0.0001. Okay, so I'll just insert 0 0.0001 here. And that should actually just solve the problem without using the potential foam utility. Of course, it'll take a while for uh, this uh, this uh, simulation to actually reach steady state, but uh, you know that's the nature of uh, transient uh, simulations. Of course, the uh, potential form helps the helps the simulation. Uh, it assumes it's inviscid and all, so it just helps it to reach uh, uniformity quicker. However, you use it, uh, yeah, doesn't really matter. Um, unless you are interested in the transient solution but of course uh, that means that you know uh, we assume everything in here is moving at uh, u meters per second to the right and uh, the wall effects are kind of negligible uh, at the start then after a while we turn on the wall effects so that's what uh, that's what uh, this simulation is uh, assuming so let's run icoform again Yep. So again, it's going to create some mesh time. Yep, it's going to start the loop. So the current number is still pretty low. And then. Yeah, the current number is low. You see, zero point zero 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 one one. 
Okay, so probably it's gonna take a while because of the very, very, very uh, many meshes that you have to solve this thing through. So I'm gonna fast forward and uh, Icofoam will actually tell us how much computation time it's actually taking. So I'm gonna pa uh, fast forward, right? So alright, fast forward about 3 minutes in. 3 minutes in, uh, we see that the execution time is 61.61 seconds, clock time is about this much. So it takes about uh, 3 minutes per time step. Now that's, the, that's pretty long but still bearable. Uh, it means that this whole simulation might take a, a very long while. Uh, but no worries, um, this is a, is a good experience, learning experience. And we see that this current number is still comfortably within uh, our parameters. In fact, that means we can uh, kind of increase our time step, so to speak. But uh, you know, we just leave it as it is first. We can uh, increase our time step later. We can yeah, use this time to study you know, what, what goes on in, within the first like 0 0.5 seconds of, uh, of this, uh, mm, of this uh, entrance region. So again, uh, yeah, it will show that it will show the time step. It will show some residuals, and it show how many iterations uh, that we are making. But uh, yeah, I can just relax, uh, go and drink some coffee, cook some food, do your laundry, do whatever you need to do uh, while waiting for this uh, thing to actually start working. And yep. So that's the nature with the uh, large mesh size. Mesh size. So again, fast forward. Alright, so we have fast forwarded a bit. We notice that the current number is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Especially this max current number. Um, it looks like something in this simulation might be wrong if it's being expand, ex if it's expanding so much. Look at this. It started from 0 0.02, then it's rising to 0 0.03. 0 0.06, 0 0.09 and at this rate, if we keep going, it could even breach uh, 1 so that is not uh, desirable at all so perhaps after this simulation, we can go and see what uh, what Paraview is going to show us we can turn on some filters to see where the velocity what the velocity profile of the pipe is like at some uh, certain time especially maybe at time equals 0 0.2 so yeah we can use this to like you know debug debug uh, debug our simulation and we can think of ways to you know circumvent this kind of uh, issue so again fast forward i'll see whether this current number actually exceeds number one and usually what openfin does is that if the current number is like maybe two or three the simulation stops automatically. So uh, I'm going to fast forward again and see what happens. So fast forward, um, we are at approximately about 40-ish minutes or so. Uh, we found that the current number, yeah, it really blew up. The whole simulation has blown up. So we want to see what's going on. Uh, maybe in the time in this time, so let's take a look at the snappy pipe dot foam and see what we can do to debug the thing. Okay, so snappy pipe dot foam. Let's see what's uh, going on. Even though the information given is very limited, so we have uh, two time steps to try and figure out what's going on with this uh, with this thing. All right, so we can use the filter use the filter called slice so the slice filter will slice take a slice of the velocity profile or pressure profile through this thing put the u there and then we can use this button to rescale things okay yeah so that is a uh, time 0 0.1 uh, very laggy. You can see there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a you know a exit kind of thing here. So a little uh 
bluish area. Let's see the UX. Okay, so looks pretty uniform. The more important one is the UZ. See where that is going. Okay, so UZ looks okay. So going to the next step, we realize that okay, this blue area here just grew a little bit bigger. So it's a bit hard to see still. So we want to uh, come and use the glyph filter. So let's go for glyph. And apply. Okay, so wait. Okay. Let's put the zero zero. I think it should be at the origin. Okay, so let's use the glyph filter again. Now that is centered at the origin. So glyph. So we'll array it, scale it by U, and orientation should be U also. So let's see where the arrows are pointing. Okay, so it's a bit hard to see any of the arrows now. So I'm going to press this res this thing. Okay, to rescale things. Oh dear, so laggy. Apply. Ouch! What happened? Okay. <sighs> yeah, I'll let it uh, unlag for a while. It's really laggy now. Oh, the whole thing has crashed. Okay. Oh, no, it has not crashed. Good. Ah. Uh. Yeah, the computer's hanging. Let me delete this, or maybe I'll close parallel and restart. Okay, bottom line is that when there's too much data on this thing, it will tend to do this behave very funny. Okay, now we are back to this. Okay, the pressure profile looks really weird. Let's see the velocity. Let me scale it. So this is the Z velocity profile, it should be entering from this side in. Okay. So for some reason, um, this side is getting a bit uh, of a uh, increase in that uh, velocity uh, over here. Hmm. So it looks like this uh, simulation is blowing up over there. Okay. So we'll stop it here and we'll try and debug uh, all these uh, things that are going on in the next video. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.